Welcome to this video lecture on sampling. In statistics, we like to look at the data and see what story it's telling. But of course, the first thing we have to do is get some data. It would be nice if we could get all the data that are interesting for us, but that's not always possible. Let's say we're interested to know how long it takes these vitamin tablets to dissolve in water. If we take a glass of water and add a tablet, we can time that with a stopwatch. We can do that again and again. We can't really do it with all the tablets. There are too many of them. And some of them maybe we haven't even made yet. And there's also a problem that after it's dissolved, we don't have a tablet anymore. So if we're making these tablets, we can't dissolve them all to try them out because we need to keep some for the customer. So there are lots of reasons why we can't look at all the data. If we did look at all the data, we would call that a census, where you look at every number in the population. We use the word population to refer to the complete set of data. It's usually a very large set of data, or maybe even infinitely large, because the process could go on and on. So we can't study the entire population. We can't do a census, but we can do a sample. We can take some of the units in the population and observe those, measure whatever it is that interests us. In this case, the dissolution time. It's nearly finished. Okay, so how do we take the sample? That's important. We want the sample to tell us about the population in a way that's reliable. We want it to give us a true picture of what's going on in the population. So it's important that the units in the sample are representative of all the other units in the population. And the best way we can take a sample is by taking a random sample. We take every unit in the population and assign it a number. Then we use a random number generator to select a certain number of those ID numbers. And those are the units that are taken into our sample. Random samples give good estimates. They are unbiased. Uh, and so if at all possible, we take a random sample and that will give us some reliable information about the population. Now, I said that we assign a number to every unit in the population. If we make these tablets in a factory where they're made one after another, we don't have to go and write numbers on them. We can just say the first one we make is number one, the second one is number two, the third one is number three. So we can automatically assign numbers by the order in which items arise or by where they're positioned, if it's plants in a field or something else. Sometimes, units show up and they already have numbers with them because of the way they're structured or organized. Sometimes we have to assign numbers to them. Then we use the random number generator to get our sample. Let's say we're sampling items off a website. Let's say there's 70,000 cars for sale on a website. We want to see, well, what are the prices of these cars? Let's take a sample. Rather than getting a single list, there's probably all these different pages and then on every page there's a number of items. So let's say there's you know, 400 pages. We can use a random number generator to select a page number between 1 and 400. Then we look and see how many items are there on that page that we've selected. And again, use a random number generator to select a number between the first and the last so that we randomly select a page, then randomly select an item on that page. That's called multi-stage sampling. And it's just as good as random sampling. We just do it taking into account the fact that the data are structured in this hierarchic way. We would do the same if we want to select a random sample of players from a league. Randomly select a team, then select a player from that team. Then start again. Randomly select a team, randomly select a player from that team. Um, sometimes we know before we begin that the units in, this, in the population are of two different types. Suppose we want to open a hairdressing salon in Kilkenny. Okay, we might say, well, there's men and there's women. And um, if we want to identify what do people in Kilkenny spend when they get their hair done, we might decide in advance, maybe the women spend more than the men. Let's take a sample of men and a sample of women rather than just a single random sample, which might be all men, which would give us the idea that people don't spend very much. So we can deliberately target a subsample of men and a subsample of women. And that's called stratified sampling. And that's a smart thing to do. You can still draw the samples randomly within each of those two strata. 
If you don't use random sampling in the strata, you could use uh, just quota sampling, where you just select a certain number from each stratum. If you don't do it randomly, it's not as it's not as reliable. You could just take a convenient sample, people that are nearby, but that could be misleading. Or you could use some kind of expert to select people that they think are typical within the two groups. And then that depends on how good the expert is at making those judgments. Anything that's not random, you just are never sure. One bad way to take a sample is cluster sampling. Let's say you want to sample a number of tires that are in use on Irish roads to see if those tires are legal in terms of the depth of tread on the tires. To select 100 tires, you might say, hey, why don't we just sample a vehicle? When we select a vehicle, there will be four tires on the vehicle. Yes, but if it's a new vehicle, if the first tire is good, the second one's also good, the third one's also good, the fourth one's also good, you're not getting new information every time. In the cluster, you will get items that are alike they're like each other, but they might not be like the other tires that are outside the cluster. So if you want to sample tires, sample tires. Don't sample cars. If you want to sample children, sample children. Don't sample schools. Beware of taking items in clusters, in groups, because units that are close together in a cluster tend to be alike, but there might be different types of units elsewhere in the population. Another common idea is that a sample can be taken at regular intervals. This is called systematic sampling. And it's not a good idea. Let's say you have two people called Emmy and Grace who are packing these tablets. Their job is to put in the tablets and put on the lid. And when they're finished their day's work, we take a sample of the finished packed product to see if it conforms. Now, let's say Emmy does the first one, Grace does the second one, Emmy does the third one, Grace does the fourth one. Every second one they do. If we sample every tenth one at the end, every item we sample is going to be all from Emmy or else all from grace. So it could be that one of these ladies is not packing it correctly, the lid's not going on tight, but when we take our sample at the end, if we take a systematic sample, we might not find any of the defective units of packing. I know these ladies, Emmy and Grace, they wouldn't mess up like that. But I'm just pointing out to you what can happen when we take a systematic sample. It sounds like a good idea, it's not a good idea. A random sample, that's a good idea. So when we take samples, typically we look for a measurement. How long did it take? Or how much did it cost? Something that's a number. Or else we observe something that's a, an attribute, a characteristic, typically a yes-no outcome. Does it have free delivery? Does the car for sale have an NCT certificate? So it's typically either numbers or yes, no outcomes. I just want to mention big data. Big data sets are data sets associated with store loyalty cards or social media apps. There's a lot of data, so it's big, big volume. There's a lot of different types of data, video, pictures, text, dates, so there's variety in there. It's big in volume, it's big in variety. It's also rapidly changing. As an hour goes past, lots more data is added to that data set. So it's big in terms of velocity. Finally, if you're structuring data, although we write text on a horizontal line, we write numbers vertically. That's the best way to store data, vertically in a column, and put the title at the top. So you've got a, a name and then the numbers underneath. You can read more about this in section 1b in the textbook.